So hello and welcome to our Infogram webinar, the live data visualization in real time. So uh, my name is Andrew, I'm the webinar moderator and I'm going to be joined by two of my colleagues, Chris and AJ, and I'll introduce them in a second. Um, so the way that this is working, uh, I want to thank everybody who sent us data over the last couple of weeks since the last webinar and with some challenging data to visualize and it was really nice time to be able to put it into our tool and we're looking forward to showing you how it's done, how you can use our tool and how sometimes some complex data can look beautiful and be very readable using our tool. So. Um, a couple of things of the webinar. First of all, if you have any questions, feel free to type it into the questions part in our control panel here. And if you have um, any, um, actually we sent you some handouts. So this, this presentation you can see right now, the slide. And also we attached this data visualization 101 PDF. And with that, it gives you a lot of tips and tricks about which data visualization to use when, which chart to use in our tool and also how to make your story really um, really credible, really um, appealing, and uh, I'm sure you'll find it very useful. So that's a little freebie. And uh, the other freebie is at the end of this webinar, we'll be giving out a discount code so you can get a trial uh, account. So uh, stay tuned for the end where we'll show that. And I'll give you that. So uh, let's get started. So we're gonna show you, for the people who didn't submit the data and you're just tuning in to see how it's done, we're gonna show you how to use the right chart types and how to fine tune it. Um, so we've got um, six, um, six infographics that we're going to show and so I'm going to do a couple, Chris is going to do a couple and AJ is going to be doing a couple. So without further ado, AJ is going to do the first couple so I'm going to introduce him and he's going to take over. Hi everyone, this is AJ. I'm a customer success manager at Infogram and uh, we have received many submissions. I want to thank uh, all of you. And this is the spreadsheet where we put uh, all of them. As you can see, it's a bit, it's a bit cleaned uh, out. So we have removed the comments and, and uh, what users wrote, what would they would like to see. And in this uh, first spreadsheet, you can see that there is a list of the uh, states and uh, we're measuring GPS score, which is um, gender uh, parity score and I'd like to show how this infographic actually looks like so you have seen the spreadsheet and then the infographic itself is here so let me open the uh, editor and the preview and um, you can see we're comparing uh, all of the US states and the darker ones have a stronger color just because the gender parity score in those states is higher so 30 43.8 is is um, I think the second highest by the color, and then uh, New Hampshire has a gender parity score of uh, 57. Um, there's an explanation what the gender parity index uh, measures, um, uh, but the visualization itself, um, let me show you how you can create it uh, from this simple uh, spreadsheet. So the first thing you would need to do to add a map like this uh, would be to click on the add a map. Uh, toolbar on our right side. Once you click on the map, you can choose from uh, various maps. So for, for free users, um, you can choose World uh, USA map. Um, for paid users and starting with our pro plan, um, there's more uh, maps, uh, 200 country regional maps. In this case, we can use the US states map, uh, which is available actually for everyone. So uh, we add a map and it is already populated with the states mm, themselves. If you double click on the chart and double clicking on any um, object will allow you to edit it, whether uh, on the um, infographic itself or in the spreadsheet that opens on the left side of the screen. So here you see a specifics for this particular chart type. In the uh, first column you have English titles which are uh, identifying the states. Then you have a numerical value which are you going to compare the states uh, against each other. Uh, there's group, column, coordinate, color, and label colors. These are not mandatory. The mandatory are the first two. In our data webinar um, spreadsheet, we have uh, more. We have callout label one and callout label two. So we want to actually show this uh, as an explanation that it's gender parity score and state ranking. These two columns can be added into these additional text columns, which simply will show you uh, additional Textual information in the tooltip. So uh, I can simply copy paste column by column, uh, but I'd like to um, add um, a couple of columns here just to prepare this spreadsheet 
um, the way it has to be uploaded into our um, chart. So um, first goes first two mandatory um, columns. Then there is a group column, which in, case the, in this case we're not grouping. Um, there's the coordinates, just to show you right here. And there's the label. Since label will be the same as the state name, we can leave it empty. I also don't need the first row uh, because it's self-explanatory right here at the top. So let me just delete that from the spreadsheet as well. And since it is a Google spreadsheet, I can always connect it uh, to a chart uh, to allow live data connection. So um, simply click at the top, uh, which says add, add Google Drive document. Once you are authorized uh, and you can access your Google Drive, you can search for the spreadsheet. In this case, this is the first one. So I'll select it. And once it is connecting, it will upload all the data from that particular spreadsheet. Uh, you will be able to choose uh, which sheet you would like to visualize from that big spreadsheet that we are connecting. Um, it's still connection. Uh, sorry, let me try that again. If not, I can simply copy paste the data. I'll try to refresh the page, try again, and if the data connection uh, does not allow us, then um, simply let's copy paste the uh, data manually. I think we will have to copy paste the data manually this time. Okay, so um, let me select the first. Um, Actually, I only need the gender parity score, which I would paste in the uh, value column right here. And also, um, let's delete the group. I don't need the coordinates or the labels. I'd simply need the uh, other two columns right here. So I'll select those, add it in the spreadsheet, and we have some textual information that will appear in the tooltip. What's left to do um, is perhaps we can disable the uh, show value, enable the legend, uh, and uh, also in the settings, we can adjust the colors a little bit. So the cold color will be assigned to all of those states that has a lower value. So let's select a very bright red color, and then the hot color, a stronger uh, red, will be assigned for those states which have a higher gender parity score. And uh, more or less, this chart is already uh, similar to what we have at the top. Only the color codes are a little bit different. And also the gender parity index uh, title is missing for this particular column. So we can double click again. And in the value field, we can enter either uh, abbreviation uh, or the full title. Once you close it, uh, you see that all the changes are saved. So if we would now drag and drop this map at the top of the infographic, you would um, see that these maps are almost identical. The only little difference is, is, is the color shade. So that's how you can create a map, uh, which uh, simply compares states, some geographical data one to another. Um, we have another submission. And um, since I'm focused on maps, we can do another one. It's uh, this kind of spreadsheet, which compares the Indian regions. And uh, I forgot to show one thing in this particular infographic is that when you enter all of this uh, data, uh, if a viewer hovers over with his mouse cursor or presses with the touch screen on a particular state, he gets a tooltip where all this textual information is entered. So in the interactive mode, uh, users can engage and interact with the data. Um, it's available for all of the maps and all for all um, of the elements that you added to it, whether it would be highlighted region or simply a point on the map. So moving on very quickly to another map um, uh, submission that we got. This was Indian regions and incidents of uh, indebtedness. Um, and they would like to compare uh, years um, 1991 and 2012. So we have a little spreadsheet. What we can do, uh, I'll show you the end result of this infographic. We are doing two maps um, side by side. So you see Indian maps and Indian regions, where um, in 2012, you can see some regions being darker, meaning that um, they got more in uh, depth. So how do you create this chart? Again, very easily. Uh, you click on add a map. And for this uh, 
Indian map, you would need to have a pro subscription. So you can add India international map version. Once you have it, um, double click to uh, add the information. Um, in this case, I have specific regions. I don't need um, all the spreadsheet to be pre-populated, so I'll simply delete it. I'll copy um, only those regions from the spreadsheet that are useful for me and answer, enter them in the uh, first column, which is uh, English title. Then I'd like to show these values uh, in a year 1991. So I'll paste it in the value column. And also um, I'd like to show both of them uh, one next to another, like we did in the previous map um, in the text uh, column over here. So with the percentages. So I'll, I'll copy this one and I will copy this one. That's about it. We have all the information that we need to visualize this uh, particular map. Also, we can enable the legend. And in the settings, what we can do is actually to uh, um, fix the range. So we would be comparing um, a, a, against the highest value possible in the whole spreadsheet. So this would, in, uh, since when I will enter 2012, it will be 54. So we can add it from zero to 50. So I will have one map. Now, not to start and um, do everything from uh, scratch again. Um, let me just choose another color. What I can do um, is duplicate the existing map. So this icon over here would duplicate it. And uh, I can make them side by side by clicking narrow. So when I duplicate, click narrow, uh, I get another similar uh, map and then I can adjust the data over there. So um, these were the uh, items for the year 1991. If I uh, need now for 2012, I can go to this spreadsheet, copy, and then paste it in the same value column. Uh, at this point, we will have two maps. They would be side by side. And you can already see that um, some of the regions have uh, different um, colors, a bit stronger, um, simply because uh, we fixed the grid. And now the um, second map has um, uh, higher values. That's why more intense the color. What's missing, perhaps, is the uh, years. So you can add um, subtitles or body text above the maps to simply show uh, what is that you're talking about? So this would be um, incidents of indebtedness in 1991. And uh, very similarly, uh, we can duplicate. And then the next one could be 2012. I'm almost done. Bear with me. Um, now what you can do is put those um, objects side by side. So simply hover over, uh, over a text object, make it narrow. Um, and the same um, you can do with this object as well, make it narrow. So now you have two charts and two charts side by side, uh, very similarly as we have in the top of the infographic. Once you preview, um, the same as the, in the other charts, you can hover over a particular region in India and then see uh, the indebtedness um, in 1991 and uh, 2012. So it's pretty easy. Uh, follow the data structure of the map spreadsheet. Um, copy, paste, or uh, add the file from your Google Drive, and then uh, assign colors, uh, fix the ranges, and you would have something to compare um, regions um, according to some indicators over a period of time. Uh, thanks. That was about the maps. Uh, I'll pass uh, you on to my colleagues, Andrew. Uh, he will show a couple more examples. Thanks, AJ. I'm just going to double check that we don't have any questions for you first before we go any farther. Um, yeah, there's uh, no specific questions, just ones that we'll get to at the end. And somebody was asking about the replay. We do have the replay on uh, YouTube. It'll be there soon, and I'll show you how to get to that at the end. But uh, first, I'm going to show you a couple more examples. So these ones I think I'm going to go through pretty quickly because AJ was really thorough about showing how our tool works, how you can copy and paste or link data or how you can uh, recreate things. So in my case, I've got a couple here. Uh, one is for a bank here, for Caribbean Development Bank. Um, 
here we are. So here's the final product, but I'll show you the data first. All right, so here's the different sets of data. So these could be in different uh, sheets if you wanted to, but uh, it's all on one sheet here, so you can have an idea of how it looks. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a report uh, by year showing this uh, different financing that was approved, the borrowing countries, and the distribution of approvals by sector. And uh, what was done is just taking these values and copy and paste them into the, the editing, um, into the spreadsheet editor. So here we're in the editing view of the tool and you can see what it looks like completed. Each of these things were done the same kind of way, double click to edit and enter in the data. And with any of the charts, you have a bunch of little customization here you can do at the top. So you could show the values, for example, you see your preview updates. Uh, and in this case, also the colors could be changed. So if you go in here, you can change a color one at a time. Same with the, how the maps worked. Um, so yeah, in this case in particular, uh, AJ showed you the side-by-side, -side, and this is using the side-by-side -side feature. So you just use this to make it wider or more narrow. And um, also here's a simpler version of the maps. So this is one of the regional maps that you also get with the pro or the business um, with the, those plans. Um, one of the great things with this, so again, if you click on preview, you get to see what it looks like with the interactive version. So click on preview. So you see this infographic takes up very little space, and that's because these radio buttons were used. So in addition to the animations and the rollovers, we also have the option to put different data sets all in the same space. And this is a particularly nice dynamic one where the values are changing quite a lot. And so it'll recalibrate for the, um, the spacing for the scale. And here you can also do it. So it's really good for showing different years or perhaps showing different countries and just gets the people who are visiting your page more engaged and they want to, they're more interested in staying and to play with the data and it really sticks into their mind. So yeah, this is an example of a stacked chart. Uh, and actually I'm going to show you in the next one uh, another kind of stacked chart exactly, uh, actually. So this one's pretty simple. You can see how the data is separated by year and by region. And here you can use a quote block to make a focus on certain information. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to go and actually show you, go back to the editor here, and I'm going to show you the next one already. So in your tool here, you go back to the library, and here's the other one. This one had a huge, huge data set, so it's actually really useful uh, to use a data visualization whenever you have tons of data, because I'll show you what the actual spreadsheet looked like. So here's our spreadsheet uh, with tons of numbers, and it's really hard to get any sort of an idea of what it means just by looking at the numbers because it's overwhelming. I don't think any brain can process that much information. So what we've done here is we've separated it here with the radio buttons again at the top and then making a stack chart so you can see the different values right on top of each other. Instead of making, in this case, uh, four different charts, we did it all on top of one. And then instead of making three different versions of those four charts, we just made the radio buttons. So again, to see that, you do it in preview, then you get all of the interactivity, and you can click through here. So this one is um, some information about school, about a school, about all the schools actually in the region. And so here it's filtered by school type. So the legend here shows you. And when you scroll over, it sort of grays out the ones that you don't want. And then by gender. So of course, you've got boys and girls adding to 100%. So it's a kind of nice way to visualize information as a great big block like this. And you can really see which way it tends to. And this is a total in planned admissions by regions. And then you have all the regions down here. So I'm just going to go back and show you what that looks like in the spreadsheet. It's very similar to the data that we just saw in the Google spreadsheet. And so this is our first data set. And it depends on what you're doing, which chart you're, you've chose to use. But some of them have it based on, like these radio buttons are based on the different columns. But in this case, you can actually add new sheets. And it's just as easy as pressing add. And then you add a new spreadsheet here. Delete what you don't need, copy and paste what you want, or just just um, link it. So this, let's go back here and delete that because I don't need it. So like with any of the, it's just like an um, Excel document. You can delete the sheets you don't want here. You can go and right click and choose what you want to do with the different columns and rows. 
And of course, with any of them, go in and check the settings. You can change the size, you can change the axes, um, the labels on the axes and the range. Um, yeah, and so here's a couple of different kinds of charts that uh, maybe some people aren't always thinking of using. It's a pictorial. So this one is actually um, a pictorial bar. So it's kind of like a progress. And you can change, well, let me go back in there so you can see what it looks like. So it's pretty simple. You just add the values that you see in the preview, and you've got your little chart. Very simple. The other one that's really useful is this size comparison. So it's a way of choosing. You can choose your icon here. So with the free, you have a few, and with the paid plans, you have over 100. Uh, so you choose something to tell the story. If it's a dollar sign, the computer, a person. Uh, in this case, it's people, boys versus girls or here are the different types of schools. And so the bigger the size, the bigger the value. And another great one is table because sometimes you just can't visualize the data into a picture and you want to do it by the table. So if I click on preview, one of the really powerful things about putting a table here is sometimes you just want to quickly sort, like it's a lot of numbers here, and you don't want to sort it by alphabetical order. You want to actually sorted by, let's say, the percent target achieved so you can see what the lowest to the highest was. And that rearranges everything here, and then you can just read it out. So it's also an interactive visualization in its own way. And again, here we use the radio buttons. So you can imagine this entire thing would be much longer if we didn't use these radio buttons or the stacked chart or, again, the radio buttons here. So I went through that really quickly. <laughs> But um, I think you get the picture that um, large data can be visualized using these different types of, um, of visualizations. Um, I'm just going to show you how I chose how you choose a pictorial in case you want to do it yourself. So anytime you want to add something, the pop-up appears here. You do the chart, the map, the text, pictures, or video. So click on Add Chart. You get over 35 charts. Choose a pictorial and then the kind you want. So size comparison was in this one. But if you uh, want, we don't have time to go through it today, have a look through all the different visualizations here, try them out, and I'm sure there'll be one that'll match you. And if you look at our presentation that we attached here, there's some options there too. Uh, and also I'll show you our blog at the end, which also has a lot of data stories, data visualization stories about which charts to use. So those are mine, and I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Chris to show you the last couple. Hi there. Um, my name is Chris. I'm first time here joining webinar, um, so hope you can bear with me. Right. So we had a data set which was pretty big. Wait, um, let's find it. Oh, it's actually here. So we had a survey from Ghana um, surveying different people about their perception of e-commerce in Ghana. And you, as you can see, when you're doing a survey, you get a massive amount of data and you might want to visualize that. If, if you want to communicate your data, right? So let's go back to our account and let's have a quick look how we think you could visualize a survey. So, right, the survey is about e-commerce in Ghana. So um, when you have survey data, it's quite nice to use different sort of pie charts um, where you have like opinion polls, like how many know something or don't know or um, so a few data points that um, should should show how society think. And then this is the interesting part. We had a question like, how do you visualize text, right? Sometimes in surveys you have like open-ended questions, right? So what would you like to get improved or what do you think is important? And now I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet and speak a little bit of how we visualize the text. So what we did, we, we used pivot tables in the spreadsheets in Google Drive to um, sort out some values that we were particularly interested into. And then we had this um, sort of long list of different reasons, sort of what kind of challenges people face as an online shopper in Ghana. And those responses were quite different, right? So what you can do is you can sort of code the replies into some kind of keywords, and then you can summarize those keywords and do a count on those, right? And then it's pretty easy to visualize that. You can um, use a tree map, you can use a word cloud um, to show sort of a general picture of, you know, what people actually care about. So there's one thing and just to show you how it looks like, let's make a new tree map. So let's add a chart, um, let's pick a pre-map. 
there we go. This one is a big one, but there's a lot of data that we don't need at the beginning. So yeah, and by the way, I'm not a Mac user, so I'm super clumsy with this computer. So I'm deleted the data that I need, didn't need, and I'm taking the data that I want to show, and there we are, right? Uh, perhaps let's make this chart a little smaller, and let's make it side by side. Ah, there we go. So if you're interested in how to visualize textual data, this is a way how to do that. Right? All right, we have another one here um, from a magazine that wants to visualize um, grant allocation in different kind of counties, counties in education. <clears throat> and again, we have similar situation that there's a quite massive data set, um, different kind of grants uh, granted to different states. And what we did here, we again are using radio buttons to summarize uh, different kind of angles. So in first preview, you can see so how many grants each county was awarded, and you can just hover over the bar and you can see the number and also in the same chart using the radio buttons we have put in so what's the actual dollar value of those grants right and there's another one um, the grants allocated um, sorted out by project types right so different counties get different kind of projects for different reasons um, we did a short summary and showing a couple of ways how to show that uh, one option could be um, like a donut chart if you don't have too many values there or again like a, you can choose something classical like a bar chart or column chart that summarizes your data in a very nice and neat way right um, we're almost there we have I think one more um, this is a quick one right it's data sets of different scientific journals and their impact factor. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the number is about, but um, it's a print, in pretty, pretty simple case. Um, you have uh, quite a lot of text and, and, and long titles. Um, so you want to make the actual infographic a little bit wider. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So to make your infographic wider, uh, if you have a, like a longer titles here, you go to infographic settings and then there's a section where you can change how wide is the infographic. Let's make it more wider, right? Now it's quite wide. Also, if you want to use the um, visualizations in your presentations, you actually might want to download your charts um, as was in this case. So I'm going to go for download, which is a pro feature. And then you can see different sort of download options. Um, you can download as an image or you can download as a print file, a PDF that's high quality. But I'm going to go for image at this point. And I'm going to actually the cool part in, in the download section is that you can choose whatever dimensions you need. So I'm going to make it quite big. Let's make it 2,000 pixels. And there are some other options that you can do, right? And I'm just going to go for download. And yeah. There we are. You are sort of, you have your file, and we can use the file for presentations offline in PowerPoint or any other tool you would like to. Right, so um, that was it from my side. And you, back to you. Thank you, Chris. So I'm going to have a quick look at the questions and see what we've got here. And there's a few. All right. Um, uh, yeah, here's a big one. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I could answer it right away. So it's actually, um, how does Infogram, uh, how is our tool different from all the other tools out there in regards to the plans? So, and because they're trying to decide which one to purchase, it looks like. So um, for the person who asked that question, if you could just email me, either Andrew at Infogram or email sales at Infogram, and we'll explain it to you when we can just get into depth about that, uh, or anybody for that matter, if you want to. Um, 
can you show interaction on a website page? If you mean the interactive graph, um, infographic, yes, of course you can. Um, the way that you do that is you just publish it. So the way you publish it is you click on share. Then uh, you can either just share it by, by this actual link. And then if you share it on Facebook or whatever, it gives a little preview and then it links to this page, which looks like this. Not much different, and it's hosted on our page. But if you want to put it on your, your web page, by all means, use this embed code. Click on uh, the response or fixed, copy that, and add it into it. So if I go to Tumblr, for example, and I start a new post, so text, make sure I have the HTML turned on, and then I just put any title. So I just copy and pasted this, um, this embed code. And then I publish it. So you could do this on any website if you want to have it interactive. And then I look at what that looks like. You'll see that it has the animations and the interactivity, just like that. And if you have other things. So this looks like this because I have it on my Tumblr with this theme. But if you do it on your website, for example, uh, we have Euronews and all of these um, Huffington Post. They've used our uh, infographics, this type of version. And it looks pretty seamless when it's on your website. And um, yeah, so if you have inf if you have any questions about that, let me know. Uh, what else? When adding side by side, can you add titles to each chart just above them? Yeah, the way that that's done, and it was done in my example, this one here, you drag and drop things to rearrange them. So actually, these titles are different items than the actual chart. So the chart is added by clicking on add chart and the titles are added by add text. So what we've done is we've added this chart, we've added this text, and then we've just placed it on top of it like that. So I don't want to mess it up, but if you do this, you could see what you can do with it. You can kind of rearrange where everything is placed. So usually you'd put a subtitle. So if I go to add text, subtitle, that's what this particular one is. This is a subtitle, this is a title or headline and this is a chart. So that's what you would probably do. Just make sure that you make the title also uh, smaller and not wide. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, do you have examples of published infographics to that are public to see online? Yes. Um, can you share the data to reproduce? Um, we don't share the actual data source, but if you go to infogram slash featured. Here are some of the more notable ones that are made with our tool. And it's also part of our, our blog and our events here. So here you can scroll through some of the ones that are done, maybe get some inspiration and see some other things that maybe you haven't used yet and how other people use it. Click on it and you can have a look at it. Also we have a search feature. So if you go to infogram search, you can search any of the publicly info, publicly published infographics here. So for example, I don't know if you look up for, what should I look up? <laughs> um, I don't know, electronics. See if something comes up with that. Sure, 424 results. And then you can see what people have made and this is the actual published version with the interactivity. So you can't take their data, but you can share it. And then you have the same kind of way to share it. And then you can put it in your website or you can just share this on Facebook if you find it interesting. So that's uh, still, it's possible to share everything. Um, uh, that's another one about the titles. Yeah, another, pers another person asked pretty much the same kind of thing. I think I covered it, how you share it on social media or, or your website. So you should embed it the way that I showed using the embed code. Um, let me see what else here. Does infogram sheets still read commas and numbers as decimals? Um, this is AJ. I can answer this question. So the uh, last comma or last dot would be interpreted as a decimal point. If you're trying to uh, enter a number and uh, make it so that is um, use a thousand separator, at the moment uh, I suggest you can uh, use a space. A space would simply uh, make that number as a whole. So if you see this spreadsheet and the uh, cell B2, um, you can replace that comma with a, a space, and this would be 270,000. At the moment, um, this comma, because it's the only and the last one in this data set, uh, represents decimal places. In um, 
in very near future, we're going to add a setting for the charts, which will uh, allow you to choose whether the thousand separator would be um, space and then decimal separator, uh, decimal point is comma or vice versa. Okay, there's a lot of questions. I'll try and answer two of these really short ones. Is there a way to indicate significant differences in charts? I mean, sure, if you want to put an absolute value. I'm not sure it's too general to answer definitely, but if you just add any chart. And let me just delete what I don't need here. Let's say we have two values here. One is 5,000 and one is 5. You can show it like that. Or um, you can also show it through colors, through by using different colors here by setting it. Um, yeah, but if you want to send uh, your data to us, you can write it to hello at Infogram. And uh, we can try to go through it and give you the best suggestions, give you a demonstration if you're interested in using it. Um, and the other one was show how to add radio buttons. So let me delete here. Do I have radio buttons? Here's radio buttons. So in this particular case, it was added by different columns because every time you start a new chart, you get dummy data. So you should just check how the dummy data is set up because it can be a little bit different in each of them. And you can see there's radio buttons already here. So if there are radio buttons, it'll show up in your dummy data and you can see it's by column. And in the example I had before, it was actually by sheets. So you'll know when you see the preview, when you look in the spreadsheet. How do you know what chart type to use? Thank you for reminding me. So about.infogram. And then under the blog, we actually have an article about which um, data visualization to choose. So actually, there's a bunch of different ones that you can do here. And you can click on the next one. So in the handouts, we also have some, uh, one of the handouts, one of the PDFs is how to choose which um, visualization to use. And that's the data visualization 101. It shows a little bit about how to make the story the best and how do you how to choose the right ones. Sorry, I'm trying to go to the older post. On the blog, we do have a really good article. I think it's on the, I'm just trying to scroll back. Um, it must be on the third page. And the reason why I'm taking the time to go through this because it's actually really useful. And if you follow this guide, you probably always choose the right chart. And it relates directly to our tool. Maybe I went too far here. In any case, it's so it's probably on the second page. All right, hold on. I'm actually just going to open up this PDF here so you can see how it works. So yeah, this explains just in a really quick review about how you can do it about which one to use and for your different kind of types of data. So yeah, just have a look at this presentation and you can check it out. And also we have that, um, that blog entry. I can't find it right away, but it's called uh, which visualization to use. Um, all right, we're going to wrap this up. So I'm just going to see if there's one more question we can get here. Um, can you explain the analytics part of Infogram? Sure, there's a couple of options to track your analytics of who's been looking at your infographics. So here we have the analytics directly from your main menu. So you can click on analytics and you will see who's reached your um, infographics and where they came from here. And you can see it by date. You can see it by uh, which infographic. So this is really useful. Your other way is also to go into the actual settings. And if you're using Google Analytics for your website, let's say you embedded this infographic on your site and you want to see how many people saw the actual infographic, just put in your tracking code that you have with your Google Analytics and save it and you're good to go. So the other questions, we'll try and get back to you uh, by emailing you. Um, or if you want to be answered right away, feel free to write us to sales at Infogram or hello at Infogram for these particular data questions and um, yeah we have a lot of webinars every two weeks we do uh, getting started uh, every four weeks and then every two weeks we have a webinar so if you want to know more about how to actually get deep into the tool that's probably the one to look for you so I promised at the beginning that we'd give um, free trial 
So the different plans that we have, a lot of you might be free, but we also have Pro where you get access to the downloads, all the maps, and all the icons and much more. Business where you can remove our logo and add yours. And then Enterprise where you get a custom design template if you're interested in that right to sales. But we're giving a free demo, um, free trial. So let me go and get that code for you. So here is the trial code. So you can get a trial of pro or business, the two that I just showed you, by typing in Data Rocks by going to your account, clicking on this, choosing the plan you want, and then typing in that discount code. So I'll leave this up for everybody to see. And I thank you for attending the webinar, and we hope to see you again in the future. Thanks very much. Bye.